Hi everyone, this is Emily Duplessis with Rental Rookie. Today's video tutorial is going to show you how to effectively and accurately use our property analysis spreadsheets that you have downloaded from our website. Um, you'll see that the spreadsheets at the bottom, there are different types. You'll see that there's a single family or single unit dwelling spreadsheet, a multi-unit dwelling spreadsheet, and a student rental unit spreadsheet. Today's video tutorial is going to focus on primarily the single unit dwelling. Now, all of the spreadsheets are fairly similar. There are only some minor tweaks and changes on each one. For example, on the um, on the student rental spreadsheet, you'll see that the main difference comes with the cash flow section where with a single unit dwelling, we have just one box for monthly rental income. If we look at the student rental, you'll see that a lot of times landlords or investors who own rental properties will charge students by semester one flat fee. So you'll see that the, um, the formulas that have been inputted are slightly different for a student rental spreadsheet versus the single unit dwelling, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as a novice investor, you probably find a lot of your uh, properties that you're interested in just perusing the internet. So on websites like Redfin or Realtor.com, um, Truilia, Zillow, any of those are fine. I've put up a sample property on Redfin. The reason that I pulled it up on Redfin, um, and I use a lot of those other sites as well, but Redfin typically will list property taxes where sometimes sites like Realtor.com don't list those. So it's hard to be able to account for that whenever you're running your analysis. So to get started over here, we're gonna go ahead and put in the property information, 912 Orchard Avenue. Why um, we have a box for this and why this is important primarily is because if you run a lot of these analyses, you know, I run maybe five to 10 of these a week on different properties that I'm interested in, you need to be able to keep them straight so as to not um, be pulling up the wrong analyses for the wrong property. So if we go ahead and tag these in the property information, you're going to keep those straight. Over here, we've got 948 in terms of square footage. Year built, if we look over here, we've got 1946. And then the property type is a single family home. So <clears throat> all of the property information is inputted and we can go ahead and start running the numbers. The one thing that I need to mention before we get started that is so, so, so very important, I can't stress this enough, is that on the actual spreadsheet number section, you will see that there are yellow boxes and there are white boxes. Okay, the yellow boxes, and I have a little note here also to remind you that those boxes are the ones that you want to actually input your figures or your numbers. The white boxes you do not want to touch. I repeat, the white boxes you do not want to touch. The white boxes have formulas that are already inputted in. That way when you put your figures in, it will automatically calculate numbers and um, figures for you. So you do not want to touch the white boxes. You only want to input information in the yellow boxes, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We've got a purchase price of $145,000. We put that in. Um, down payment. Now, with investors, for a conventional loan, which is usually what investors will use, the requirement is 20%. We put 0.2. We're working in Excel, so we have to put 0.2 to get 20%. That automatically calculates your down payment as 29,000 and with a loan amount left of 116. If we go down to interest rate, uh, for investors, interest rates are usually a little bit higher. So let's go ahead and put in 5.25 as our interest rate and our term is 30 years. You'll see that in this white box, it automatic, automatically calculates your payment with principal and interest, interest as 641. That will be your monthly mortgage that you'll be paying. Um, and you will see that that automatically populates over here under monthly expenses under the principal and interest box as 641. Okay, so whenever we're looking at the actual monthly breakdown, that is already put in there for you. Closing costs, okay, that's, you're going to have to get that from your lender. I can't really, that's gonna differ on so many variables. I have a box here because I think it's important when you run the numbers, maybe not in the beginning because you're just trying to get a feel for a property itself, but as you go along in the process, finding out what your closing costs, that's going to be a part of the initial cash investment that you put in, which will then give you ultimately a more accurate ROI. So eventually you'll want to fill that box in. If you're just perusing in the beginning, 
I usually leave it blank. Annual property tax. Like I said earlier, one of the things that I like about Redfin is that you actually can find that on their website. They list it under finances and fees. So if you come down, you'll see tax year, the total taxes, $1,007. So if we come over here, we'll put that in. As an, Again, that is an annual figure. And then the insurance will say about $200, give or take, for this situation, for this property in this area. That is going to be a number that you are also going to want to get from your insur insurance agent because that's going to differ on the type of property and area as well. So the first table is complete. If we come over here to the second table, you will see upfront expenses, vacancy rate. That's basically a holding cost box. Um, and I put that in there because, you know, most of the time investors need to expect to maybe have a month, a year where you are going to be in charge of having to pay the mortgage, whether it's, you know, you have somebody moving in and moving out. You weren't able to get a tenant in right away. If you were buying it and you had to list it for a couple of months before you got somebody in there, kind of the standard is that to expect one month of having to hold the property each year. So we have that box and we will account for that after we find out what our monthly figure is. Renovations, if you have to do any of those up front, you would put that in there. For the, the sake of this property, I'm going to say we're not going to put anything in. Advertising and listing fees, I'm going to put in $50. Depending on where and how you advertise, that may be a higher figure or a lower figure. So you can see up to this point, your initial cash investment is just a little over $29,000. Okay, and again, that's less closing costs. So that figure would be a little bit higher once you count or, or account for the closing costs you would have to pay. So let's look at the monthly breakdown. You can see that there are some figures that have already populated in from the previous table, principal and interest. We see that again at 641. The property tax figure, we put it in on the previous table as an annual figure. It is populated down to a monthly number because you will be paying that on a monthly basis. So that has broken down to 8392. Same thing with property insurance. That annual figure has now broken down to a per month figure. Those are all there and accounted for. Management fees. This is where if you have a property manager, you will also be paying that on a monthly basis. So you would put that fee in there. You need to account for that because that's ultimately coming out of your cash flow that you're going to be earning each month. Utilities. You would put that in there if the... Um, investor is going to be taking care of utilities. A lot of times on a single family unit, whether it's a condo, townhouse, or a single family home, uh, you can really put that in charge, you know, put that in the, the tenant's hands, which I would recommend doing. That's just one less thing you have to worry about, and it's not breaking into your cash flow. That's more money for you. Outdoor maintenance, if you have any kind of snow removal um, or lawn care, depending on where you are, you would want to account for that too. Um, and then last but not least, the HOA owned condo fee. In this case, it's a single family home, not in a development. So we don't have either of those. If it's a townhouse, you're going to probably have an HOA. If it's a condo fee, you're probably going to have, or if it's a condo, you're going to have a condo fee as well. So you would have to account for that. So at this point, our monthly breakdown is 741 with everything included. So I'm going to scroll back up to my vacancy rate, and I'm just going to put that figure in to account for the fact that probably at some point throughout the year, I may have to pay that mortgage. So that's going to be just more cash up front, whether it's in the front end or the back end of the year, um, that you're going to have to invest out of your own money. So you want to want to account for that to make sure that you are getting an accurate figure for your ROI. So going down to the cash flow, as investors, this is our uh, this is our favorite part, or at least this is my favorite part. For this property, where it is, the square footage, numbers of bed, the number of bed and baths in it, you could get about twelve hundred dollars monthly rental income. Now again, you want to make sure as an investor, whether you're talking to your realtor or you're doing your due diligence online, that you before you list your property, you are finding out what rental comps are out there. So uh, comparables, which is the you know local listings. Um, those are not just important when you're selling, but they're important when you're listing something for rent as well. So in this case, we've got $1,200. That gives us positive cash flow of $459, which is fantastic. Um, I'd like to be taking that home every single month. That's money in your pocket. So the actual return on investment is going to be just about 18.5%. Okay, and that's taking in, again, how do we calculate the ROIs by taking the cash flow that you make every month, multiplying by that, that by 12 to find out what an annual net income would be for you, and then you divide that by your actual total cash that you invest in the beginning, and that gives you what your ROI is.
Okay, so again, this is just a little video tutorial to make sure that you understand how to use these analyses accurately and effectively. You know, there's no point for us to put these source resources out there if you're not sure how to use them. And, you know, as a novice investor or a rookie investor, you know, you might not have experience with these types of spreadsheets. So I hope that this has helped. Um, I just want to reiterate again, you want to make sure that you're only putting information in the yellow boxes. If you play around with the white ones, it's going to end up messing up the formulas and then your information is not going to be accurate. And that's the main goal is that you are getting accurate information. Uh, so again, I hope this has helped. Um, I anticipate that you'll be out and using these spreadsheets as much as possible. And I hope that you are. Um, so here you go. Happy investing.